There we go. First, I'd like to make a disclaimer. I am ex-NASA, but NASA does not endorse this presentation. Right? I'm also part of the NASA, the Real Climate Stuff group. One of our colleagues is here too, Alex. And, and the TRCS doesn't endorse me. Nobody endorses me. If you notice, if you notice, my slides have the sword of truth on them. Maybe at the end of this presentation, you'll endorse me. But right now, I'm speaking for myself. And if you don't like what I say, throw snowballs at me. And if what you hear soon, you may get that chance sooner than you'd like. All right, now, sea level rise. Is there a cause and effect? Does a rise and fall in one increase or decrease the other? We're gonna answer that question. Next slide, please. Weather and CO2. Is there a cause and effect? The CO2's rise or fall influences strength, severity, frequency of weather events. Now, l later on, uh, I think Mr. Uh, Ranef Kandekar is going to add to that too. So that's great because we're kind of on the same wavelength. Next slide, please. So this is the slide. <laughs> now, this is the cover of a book jacket. It's designed to sell books. It is not designed to tell the truth but it will make money for its author. I'm not gonna give the author the credit of telling you what the name of the book is. Next slide, please. Now, this is the, uh, a split diagram of Manhattan Island. This is the uh, Hudson River. This is the East River. If you notice, there's not a lot of difference in the elevation. This is 400 years uh, of, of uh, time change. Next slide, please. This is a 2,000 year look at temperature versus CO2. Now CO2 is the green line running across here and then shoots up here uh, <clears throat> at the end of the little ice age, all right? Meanwhile, me medieval warm period shoots up, little ice age comes down, no effect whatsoever. Over a 2,000 year period, we have a 4.5% correlation, that's it, all right? Now there's a little subset here, and this subset Thank you for that, who you got that right. Uh, <clears throat> traces the recent from 1880 to the present. And yes, CO2 is rising. And you notice for one third of this graphic, temperatures are still falling. So there is some correlation, but this is what's relied upon for everybody. And you notice at the end here, uh, things kind of flatten out. CO2 still goes up. Uh, if you get the next slide, please. This is the last 18 years. We have really no increase in atmospheric temperature. Next slide, please. Weather events, all right? These are hurricanes. Meteorologists love hurricanes. They get people excited. They do some damage once in a while. Uh, <clears throat> and they happen to be the great heat transfer mechanism from the equatorial regions toward the poles, but that's another lecture. Uh, next slide, please. Here we have hurricane strikes in the US versus CO2. This is hard data. Now remember, oh, this is 280 parts per million, this is 400, and CO2 is rising like this. How about hurricanes? Okay, you can figure this one out. By the way, correlation is not causation, and inverse correlation is not causation. So don't, don't, don't read into this that we need more CO2. All right. All right, next slide, please. Here we have a concept called accumulated cyclonic energy. And what this does is it takes wind speed, it takes the atmospheric pressure, it's measured every six hours, and the concept has worked over the last, uh, from 1970 on, we don't really have any discernible trend. And by the way, over the last 15 years, remember as CO2 is still increasing, accumulated cyclonic energy is decreasing. Again, another inverse correlation, but it's not necessarily causation. Next slide, please. Here's tornadoes. Tornadoes, tornadoes scare everybody. Oh, you see all these pictures of damaged buildings. This is Cat, <clears throat> cat 5, Cat 4, Cat 3, Cat 2. Every category of tornadoes over the period that CO2 is rising is either flat or falling. All right, so severity of tornadoes is going down too. Next slide, please. This is temperature versus CO2. Same effect, temperature goes up, 
CO2, excuse me, uh, tornado uh, activity goes down. Inverse correlation again, but not causation. Next slide, please. This is precipitation, all right? Precipitation is one of the big bugaboos of global warming. This is a 100-year period. Precipitation flat. What's up with that provided me with this graphic? No change in precipitation over 100 years. Next slide, please. Uh, this is what you kind of find at the EPA. There's a box of loose screws. <laughs> all right, now let me tell you why. Let's see, next slide, please. This is uh, Brittany in France. You can see part of England here. These are contrails, jet contrails. They do affect climate and they do affect weather, all right? How do they affect weather? Well, first of all, you have an albedo effect of the contrails. Sunlight hitting them gets reflected at wavelengths that CO2 does not intercept, all right? So contrails <clears throat> make sure that the surface is slightly cooler. After 911, for four days, no planes flew. No planes. Temperature records showed that highs were higher and lows, nighttime lows were lower. Why? Because without the jet contrails, more sunlight hit the surface, converted to infrared, warmed the atmosphere so the daytime highs were higher. Without the contrails, re-radiating heat at night, the nighttime lows radiated more into the atmosphere and were lower too. So you had a dampening effect of contrails, which was made very clear during those four, that four day period. Now we still have contrails. Why would EPA spend a nickel on something that would actually ameliorate or dampen weather effects? Because oh, it's talking about extremes of being real bad. Well, they're not gonna be bad if they <clears throat> regulate the aircraft emissions. Next slide, please. Can I talk about the decision process going on? I, I apologize to the chimps. They don't deserve this. <laughs> Next slide, please. All right, now we're gonna talk about sea level rise. Here we have a 20,000-year uh, <clears throat> look at sea level rise. There's some pulses here. This is most likely the emptying of Lake Bonneville in the United States. Now you have a couple of other pulses. Tahiti may be falling off its plume because some of these measurements were taken in Tahiti, and you can see a little blue dot. And this is the, this little subset here, this is the last 8,000 years. Basically, once all the ice melted, in fact, go to the next slide, please. Thank you. The ice melted literally over a 7,000 year period. Started out here, but really from here on in, this is where the ice really melted. I'm talking about the great giant glaciers that covered North America, covered Northern Europe, uh, depressed Norway, and, and you'll see that, that quite, uh, quite soon. And so the ice is gone. We're not, there's no more ice to melt. So we've had sea levels relatively flatten out. There's a slight rise. Uh, the satellites, by the way, and in another talk of mine, if you go to my website, uh, you can see where I talk about the uh, frailty of satellite instrumentation. And that's a long lecture. I'm not gonna even start here. But the satellites show a 3.3 millimeter uh, a year rise. You don't see that kind of rise. Al Gore, excuse me, Jim Hansen, says that we're gonna see this much rise, five meters, by the end of this century, all right? <clears throat> we're gonna be inventing new laws of physics to make this happen, all right? <laughs> well, and we'll talk about that later. Okay, next slide, please. This is how we measure sea level, real measurements of sea level. We take a tie gauge, it's anchored to the bedrock, and we measure it, and we have good, hard data showing how this is measured. Next slide, please. Okay, I borrowed this slide uh, from Nils, and uh, there's a couple, a couple of others. Uh, Nicholas, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> this is a bias in tide gauges. First of all, that 3.3 millimeter that Noah says, most of the tide gauges are below it. This is worldwide. Next slide, please. This shows you the bias in, in, in tide gauges. Why? People put tide gauges where, quote, sea level is rising or their land is sinking. So you're taking tectonics into effect here. So here are the places where sea level is, quote, falling. Why? Because land is, is, is rising. And uh, here you have subsidence and many, many more tide gauges. So if you take the average of all of these, of course it's gonna show sea level is really rising. Next slide, please. This is, again, uh, compliments of uh, our chair here. 
It shows the tectonics involved in, uh, in isostasy, which is you put a, a couple of miles or kilometers worth of ice, it depresses the land, it bulges at the edges, and these are meters, and it also depresses things down here into the asthenosphere. Uh, <clears throat> when this ice melts, you get popped up a rebound. Next slide, please. These are tectonics in the Baltic. Uh, notice central Norway and Sweden, where most of the weight of the ice was, has rebounded enormously, 800 meters up here. By the way, these lines, they're equivalent to what we in meteorology use as isobars and isotherms. Uh, I call these isotechs. They are places where tectonics are equal. So you have down here an area here where tectonics are basically balanced out. Down here in Holland, you see that the land is sinking. Again, as a result of the weight being removed from Norway, the, the ice is now in the oceans. Water is heavy, cubic meter is one ton. And you put all those tons in the ocean, it depresses the ocean basin. So Holland is kind of sinking, but right here in the Mecklenburg bend of the Baltic, we have a place called uh, Wismer, Wismer, Germany. Next slide, please. And Wismer has a good 100, uh, and, and going back to 1850, we have a good long-term record of sea level rise. In this same period, C, uh, CO2 has gone up 38%. Do you see any signal whatsoever in the sea level here showing a 38% acceleration? Is sea level rise affected by CO2? Well, if you can see it, you're pretty good. I can't. Let me, let me go to another place here. Uh, tectonically inert, next slide, please. This is Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine uh, <clears throat> is on the Gulf of Maine. It is also tectonically inert. Here you see uh, a slightly shorter period, and you see wide sp uh, spreads here. Why? Because the tide range in Portland, Maine is over three meters every day. All right, there's a lot of wide ranges. However, I'm pretty good at curve fitting. If you looked at my bio, you probably figured that out. This is still a linear rise. And it's 125 millimeters per century. The last 25 years in Portland, Maine, the sea level has risen exactly five millimeters. Now, if you can do pretty well, if you do math, you can figure out that that is two centimeters for 100 years. The last 25 years, okay? Next slide, please. This is what the American National Climate Assessment puts out. Their lowest value for sea level rise is a low value, is two centi two, uh, 20 centimeters. The 100 year rate that is presently being experienced is one-tenth of that, one order of magnitude less. This is where you're gonna have to invent new laws of physics to get six feet, which is two meters of sea level rise in the remaining 84 years of this century. It just doesn't happen, and there is no ice left to do it. Antarctica is actually gaining ice. 0.23 millimeters a year gain or reduction in sea level rise just due to Antarctica alone. The edges of Greenland are melting. I don't have a problem with that, but the interior is also gaining. There is no way that we can get this kind of sea level rise in the next 84 years when right now we aren't even achieving this. Okay, next slide, please. Now, this is the Paris proposals, okay? We're gonna reduce CO2 worldwide. That's the, the, the big agreement. If we have a 38% increase in sea level rise, uh, excuse me, in CO2, that is not detectable, how would a 1% or 2% reduction ever be measured? And I say, we, we don't even have an instrument that could measure that. If we can't measure a signal of 38% in this line right here, forget the Paris proposals. And the disasters that most people are talking about are sea level rise. It just isn't gonna happen. Okay, next slide, please. This is the real future of New York City, a much better picture than you saw before. Abundant energy, sea level has not changed. 
And uh, this is the world the way it should be. Next slide, please. Two minutes. Okay, this is really good. Thank you, sir. Because this is my conclusion. Sea level rise and CO2, is there a cause and effect? I'm gonna scream out the answer, no. Does a rise and fall in one increase or decrease the other? Absolutely not. Next slide, please. How about weather? Weather events, cause and effect. Not really what you think, not really what you've heard. Correlation is not causation. Even inverse correlation is not causation. You have to actually get into the physics behind things to find out why they happen. And that is not happening with the IPCC. Next, please. This is what's really of concern and where research dollars need to be spent. People here have talked about an 11-year sunspot cycle. It really is a 22-year cycle, folks, because the magnetic field of the sun flips at the peaks and then reflips 22 years later. So it's uh, 22 years, not 11. However, the peaks are at 11 year intervals. These are the last three. Notice the direction. Something more serious is happening here too. The length between them is increasing. It's not really 1122 anymore. It seems to be 1224. If the level, the length of time is increasing, the intensity of sunspots is actually decreasing. If you go to the next slide, this is now way before. Go, can you go back one slide again? Right here is where we are today. We're not down at the bottom, but take a look at the, at the last two months. This is very recent data. Ne I can go to the next slide. Blank, no sunspots. We're not supposed to see that. And yet that's current right now as we speak. My good friend Willie Soon, solar uh, expert uh, extraordinaire, was uh, brutally, brutally manhandled by the press earlier this year for absolutely false accusations. And here's the greatest solar expert in the planet being pulled out of circulation for a few months while this stuff is going on. This is what people need to understand. It's what they have to you know, put some research in. Next slide, please. At NASA, when you give a presentation, this slide pops up, all right? In God we trust, all others bring data. You have seen, you, for me, you have seen data. Next slide, please. Notice the sort of truth is up here. Now, no, no, that's it. I'd like this, this group to take this as a motto. In God we trust, all others bring data. I have presented data. Thank you. Use it well.